हेलो हाय एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू माय न्यू वीडियो ऑन सिस्टम डिजाइन आई एम मोहित यादव एंड आई टीच एट स्केलर आई हैव बीन फॉर्चुनेट इनफ टू वर्क ऑन सिस्टम्स दैट सो ओवर 10 मिलियन कंकरेंट यूजर्स एंड आई हैव आल्सो बिल्ड डेटा पाइपलाइंस दैट कैन क्रंच अराउंड 1 टीबी ऑफ डेटा पर डे हैविंग लेड टीम्स एट न्यूटानिक्स एंड हॉटस्टार व्हिच हैव बिल्ड सच मैसिवली स्केलेबल सिस्टम्स आई एम हियर टुडे टू शेयर द सेम नॉलेज विद यू ऑल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सिस्टम डिजाइन कांसेप्ट कॉल्ड लोड बैलेंसिंग to understand how a load balancer works we first need to look at how a typical request flows through my entire system a request will start from a client application this client can be browser a web app or maybe a mobile app this client will call dns to resolve the domain name that i'm trying to access for example if i type delicious.com in the browser the request will go to the dns server dns server will give the ip address corresponding to delicious.com and it will return it back to the client subsequent request will then go to the ip address that is returned by the dns this ip address can either correspond to the application server which is capable of catering to that particular request or it might correspond to a proxy server which will act as a gateway to route request to the application servers since this dns happens to be the first point of contact for almost every request on internet this system needs to be very scalable and available the amount of load that this system takes is immensely huge as compared to any other system in the world also the latency which is nothing but a measure of time it takes for a system to respond to a particular request needs to be extremely low what would be the total latency over here if i have to calculate the total latency of the system it would be dns resolution plus the request time so request time will be application dependent but the time it takes for dns resolution is same for every request on the internet if this time is high the overall latency of the system increases so my goal as an engineer should be latency of the dns resolution should be extremely low and to achieve this we try to cache the dns mapping at various stages what are the various stages we try to cache it at the browser we try to cache it at the os isps and then we also replicate it to dns servers there's one more important thing now assume that if the dns servers are placed at only one geographical location let's say us and the request are originating from let's say india it will add lot of latency because india and us are geographically apart from each other and that's the reason this geographical distance will add to extra latency typically it takes around 200 milliseconds to uh, for a request to reach from us to india so every request which is originating from india and is getting resolved in us will have a inherent lag of 200 milliseconds it is not a very desirable outcome right so to avoid that kind of scenarios dns is basically replicated across the globe and because it is replicated across the globe updating or changing the ip address on these dns server is not a very easy task this change will have to be propagated to the entire world which might take hours or even days in some cases i have a wonderful resource in the description that you should refer to understand how a typical dns works also i would like to pause here and request you guys to please like and share this video and support our free content on system design topics and software engineering in general now coming back to the topic in the example that we considered the dns was just returning one ip address it will work for most of the websites in the world but consider this dns resolution to be of google or facebook scale basically a tech giant which have massive amount of queries massive amount of user base and they process billions of queries per second in those cases if i just return one single ip address chances are that all the request of the client will hit that particular instance and there is no such instance which would be able to handle traffic of the entire world so that machine will eventually die to avoid this what typically these tech giants do is they deploy multiple 
IPs on which the client request will resolve to, right? So instead of returning, let's say IP one, they return a list of IP. So IP one, IP two, IP three, IP four, and they send this particular list to the client. Now it is the responsibility of the client to figure out which IP to talk to. Typically, in DNS resolution phase, it tries to follow up something called as a waterfall model what is a waterfall model it will try to connect with the first ip if the connection is successful it will not connect with ip 2 ip 3 or ip 4 if the first connection itself is successful it will connect with the first ip now if all the clients will start connecting to the first available ip that also is not solving the problem even though i'm returning a list but essentially each client is connecting to the first ip that is returned So if I return the same IP list to every client, I will be gated by a limitation that every client will try to connect to the same IP. What DNS do is instead of returning the list like this, they return the list in a shuffled order, meaning that it is very much possible that user one gets a list like IP one, IP two, IP three, and so on. user 2 gets a slightly different order like ip2 ip1 and ip3 user 3 gets a list like ip3 ip2 and so on this way i have successfully distributed the load to my available instances right another way to do traffic routing is to use a geo based routing strategy that means people who are residing in india will get a ip address corresponding to india data center people who are residing in us will get a ip address corresponding to us data center that also bridges the latency gap why because if india user sitting in india gets a ip address uh, of the data center in us there will be a inherent uh, lag in resolving the subsequent request so it makes sense to have a geo based routing strategy as well now we have identified the ip address which will be responsible for answering all my client request this could either correspond to a single server or a gateway server which will route traffic to my available servers if we choose to route the entire traffic to a single computational server the only way to scale is to run our application on a better hardware however if we choose to route traffic via gateway server we can add more instances as and when required and adding more instances will help us cater to multiple or higher number of incoming request another important advantage of this approach is that this allows application servers to keep evolving without the need to make dns changes now this dns changes we have learned that it might take hours or even days in some cases so if we have to update the code of my application server all i need to do is add more application server let's say as1 as2 and as3 register these application server in the uh, in the load balancer and deregister the older ones and i have saved myself from updating the dns record if this was the one server case the ip address of that one server would have changed and i would have to update the dns mapping as well lastly one very very important benefit that we are getting out of having a gateway machine fronting my application server is that this gateway machine also provides a layer of security how all the machines that are below the load balancer can typically be in my private network meaning these instances can typically be disconnected from internet and whenever they want to be using any data from the internet it will come only via load balancer so my load balancer is the wall that connects to the internet and my application servers just talks to the load balancer the load balancer also takes care of encrypting and decrypting the message and securing the request via https so my load balancer layer can typically be https and my application server 
can implement a HTTP protocol. Now there are two major types of load balancer. One is a hardware load balancer and the second one is a software load balancer. A hardware load balancer is a specialized hardware which takes care of routing the requests that are coming to it. Most likely you end up using a software load balancer which can run on a commodity hardware to route traffic. And this software load balancer is again divided into two types. One is a layer 4 load balancer and the second one is a layer 7 load balancer. This layer 4 and layer 7 translates to the OSI network layer, right? Layer 4, if you remember, is a transport layer and layer 7 is basically the application layer. In the transport layer, the only thing that we get from the incoming request is the IP information. So we only get the source IP and based on the source IP and the port in the incoming request, we route the traffic to the available servers. Whereas in the application load balancer, we get much more richer information in form of the headers that are passed in the request, the query params, the path params, and also the HTTP method. But what are the pros and cons of using both, right? Uh, in what cases should you use layer four? If you look closely, in the transport, we only have to rely on source IP and port. And based on this, we route the traffic. So the amount of computation that we're doing in the layer four uh, load balancer is less as compared to the competition that we are doing in application where we are processing the entire request. So in layer 4, it will be much faster to route the request whereas in layer 7, it will wait for all network packets to arrive before deciding which server should be able to serve my incoming request. But these days we are having much better hardware which are drastically reducing the slowness factor of layer 7. However, there is one more distinction why you should still use layer 4 in some cases because in layer 4 we are exposing only minimal information to the load balancer. We are only exposing the source IP address and nothing else. Hence, layer 4 load balancers are slightly more secure as compared to layer 7 where we could extract the entire information about our incoming request. The last thing that we want to look at is how do we even route traffic from a load balancer to my available application server. Load balancers keep a registry of all the available application server. So it will keep AS1, AS2 and AS3 and it will also maintain the state in which these systems are. So for example, AS2 one, two, and three are in available state. So it will mark it with green. And if there are other servers which are not in a available state, it will mark it with red and request will not be routed to those servers. But what should be the routing strategy? Our goal is to try and optimize on the resources that we have. And based on the resources, we should route the request. One of the very trivial or the brute force way to route traffic is to send the first request to first server second to second and the third request goes to the third server the fourth request again goes to the first server fifth request goes to the second server and sixth request goes to the third server and we'll keep on doing this circular distribution of requests to all the available servers in my system this kind of routing strategy is called as a round robin strategy but as you can see this is not a best strategy to go for why this is not a best strategy we can see that the application server 2 has twice the ram twice the number of cores and twice the number of disk available as compared to application server 1 and 2. Therefore, it should ideally process more number of requests as compared to the other servers. So what we can typically do is make the routing strategy in such a way that application server 2 gets approximately twice the number of requests as compared to my other available servers. How I can do that? I'll route first request to the first application server second request will go to my second application server third request will also go to the same server fourth goes to application server three fifth goes to one six and seven goes to application server two and eight goes to application server three that ways first server gets two requests this gets four and the last server will get again two requests application server two is getting 50 percent load application server one is getting 25 percent load and similarly, application uh, server 3 is also getting 
25 percent of the load. This kind of routing strategy is called weighted round robin. The other routing strategies worth mentioning over here is a least connection routing strategy. This least connection looks at the number of active connections that are there uh, with the application server and server with least number of active connection will get the next new incoming request. For example, if there are five connections to application server one, six connections to application server two, and let's say four connections to application server three, the next incoming request will go to application server three and this number will increase to five. As soon as this request is processed, the number will again decrement to four. Here also, we have the same problem as in round robin strategy that we are not accounting for the capacity of the instance. To accommodate that, here also we have a weighted least connection routing strategy where you can assign weights to a particular application server and routing will be done based on that. The last strategy that I am going to talk about is basically a least response time strategy. In least response time strategy, we look at two parameters. One is the number of connection it has and the second is the average time it takes to complete a particular request. Considering these two parameters, we decide which server should cater to my next incoming request. Now, all these strategies that we have covered till now work well if every app server is equally well equipped to answer my query. Meaning that if I have a query A, I will get the same response if I send the query A to application server 1, to application server 2 or application server 3. Regardless of where this query is getting processed, I will get the same response. This kind of a system is basically called as a stateless system. The last set of routing strategy that I have not covered in this video is called a hash based routing strategy. In this hash based routing strategy, we use the source IP address or the URL and we calculate a hash out of it. We have another video on consistent hashing to explain this routing strategy in depth. So please go ahead and watch the video on consistent hashing to know more about the hash based routing strategy, right? This typically works on stateful systems. Again, stateful system and stateless systems is something that we are going to cover in the upcoming videos. So please stay tuned for that video as well. That was all for load balancers. I hope to see each one of you again in the next upcoming videos. I'm trying really hard to provide free quality content that is essential for every software engineer. I would like to urge everyone to please like and share this video as much as you can. Your support goes a long way in prioritizing free content and motivating me to do more videos in future. If you have specific ideas or topics on which you want me to do a video, please do comment about the same. Please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified about our new upcoming videos. Thank you.